Hi guys, it's Evan. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be the beginning of a new series called Wicca on a Dime here within my channel. Um, in today's video, I wanted to kind of kick it off with something very simple and something very basic, and that is how to make a pendulum. So, for those of you wondering, what is a pendulum? How do I use it? Where do I find one? Things like that, then just stay tuned and you will all learn that very, very shortly. So, first things first, what is a pendulum? A pendulum is an object used in basic divination um, and it answers back with a yes or a no answer. Um, very, very simple, um, very, very smart. Um, I really, really recommend pendulums, especially for beginners, especially those who are beginning to actually divinate and you don't feel comfortable using a divination bowl or something like a black scrying mirror. Um, a pendulum is a very, very simple way to go and it's a very, very simple way to begin. So I will show you guys my personal pendulum. This one is made out of moonstone. And if you've been on my channel for a while now, you've seen this pendulum quite a bit and I do use it very, very often, both for personal use and as well as for doing spells and rituals for friends and family. So how do you use a pendulum? A pendulum, as I said, answers you in yes or no questions. Um, the best way is usually the end will have a little bead like this and you simply put it between your fingers like this and it rests on top so your pendulum hangs down. Now the best way to use a pendulum in my personal opinion is to steady your elbow on a table or your working space. Um, I'm sitting at my altar right now so I'm just going to steady my elbow on my altar and you can simply just simply ask your pendulum show me yes and for me yes is going in a clockwise motion everybody's pendulum will be different some people say um, up or down means yes and left and right means no that's not always true it's not always the case um, as I said this is the yes symbol for me which is clockwise and then you can steal your pendulum and then you can ask it to show you no and for me no is up and down and I'm not moving my hand at all. Um, as you can see, that's another reason why I prefer to steady my elbow, not to so much show evidence and proof I'm not moving it, just because you get a more accurate reading, because when you're holding it out like so, um, it's, always, it's natural for you to kind of shake a little bit. So with your hand being steadied on the table, you can get a more accurate and crisp reading. So that is a pendulum and that's how you use it. Now let's talk about ways you can make a pendulum if you don't have one. Um, this one I believe was, I think it was 45 US dollars so this is more of the on the expensive side of pendulums but just stay tuned because I'm going to show you guys actually how you can make your own using household objects and things that you probably just have anyway that you might just wear all the time um, or things that you can easily find laying around so the first thing is using a necklace um, now when I say use a necklace I don't mean just a single strand you know gold chain um, it needs to have some kind of charm or something heavy at the end. Uh, this necklace is actually fairy dust that I bought from a metaphysical shop near where I live. And you do the same thing, just rest your elbow. And this one's kind of long, so you can't see it, so. Show me yes. very very slowly moving but with this like I said it's the same thing as with this it has a chain and it also has something heavy at the end so you can have you know you can make it um, it can actually show you the answers with a yes or a no um, and now another option you can use if you don't have a necklace or if you don't have one that has a gem like that on it um, if you have just a piece of string or um, and a ring like this one and just a piece of string like this just do the same thing you just simply tie it on there and it's, it's really simple you guys it's that easy pendulums are one of the easiest things you can make um, and as you can see you can easily find these objects around your house um, if you don't have a ring you can easily find um, like these little clips for like keychains 
these work just as well. Um, I've actually, my very, very first pendulum that I used was actually a keychain like that, that I actually put beads on it. Um, so I kind of personalized it and customized it and made it my own. Um, I don't have it because within the process of me moving throughout the years and college and just growing up and things like that, it kind of got lost in all the turmoil. But nonetheless, um, so yeah, you have something like this. And if you really wanted to, you know, you can um, choose the string. This is just a regular black basic string. Um, but you can actually find the string to personalize custom customize it for you. Um, for example, if your favorite color is, say, seafoam green, you can find a piece of seafoam green string. Um, the cool thing about the craft is that it's very, very customizable and it's very, very personalized. So anything that you make, and, and, and I prefer to make my own um, like tools and things like that because I can customize it and um, you know I can modify it to the way I want to to where it suits my needs and it fits me personally. Um, now some other options you can do if you don't have a ring and if you don't have a little keychain hook then you can find just a simple rock. This is some carnelian. Um, but I'm not going to tie it on here because I don't want to undo my little ring here. But all you have to do is the same thing. You know, you tie it on there and it does, it serves the exact same purpose. Um, so anything that you can find that's small that you can tie to the end of a string, you can use as a pendulum. Now, if you want to buy a pendulum, here are some places that you can buy some. Um, they're mostly, they can be very inexpensive if you buy them. You can find them on Amazon.com, um, eBay.com, but as far as metaphysical shops, you can find them at www.13moons.com, and that will be linked down below in the description box. Um, that's where I actually bought mine from, this lovely moonstone one from. Um, and they have a ton. They have really elaborate ones like this. And then they have simple ones, just like a little piece of, you know, stone like this that's wrapped very nicely around a metal uh, necklace cord piece. Um, and some pendulums even come on a necklace piece like, you know, like my fairy dust does. So you can actually use it as a necklace and as a pendulum. So you can actually carry it with you and not have, you know, your pendulum just chilling in your pocket. Um, now how to select a pendulum. There are several ways in which you can select a pendulum. Um, one of which is using your birthstone. That's probably the most common and popular way to select um, a pendulum if you are going with a stone pendulum, of course. Um, you can also find this by one that you personally, the minute you see it, you just, oh, I really like that. You know, um, for me personally, whenever I come across an object where the minute I see it and touch it, I just, I love it and I just gotta have it. Um, it's kind of like that object is also selecting me too, in a sense. So I definitely try to make purchases based on gut feelings like that. Um, now, not everybody does that, and that's totally fine. That's just something I personally do. Um, another way you can select a pendulum is feeling its energy. Um, you can use your projective or your recessive hand, and you can just feel the energy, kind of, you know, rub your fingers along the stone, feel its grooves, feel its imperfections. Um, and if it feels right to you, then get it. So there's a lot of different things you can do to get a pendulum. There's a lot of different ways that you can select them. There's a lot of different places you can buy them. And there's a lot of ways you can make them. Now, how do you program it? How do you know what means yes and no? Well, simply as I showed you guys earlier, just hold it out and say, show me yes and show me no. And what I personally recommend you do is holding your pendulum um, your pendulum on yourself, whether it be in your pocket, as a necklace, in your purse, for at least seven days so you can feel its energy that it can feel your energy. So it can really kind of sense your intentions and vice versa. Um, that is how you program a pendulum. That is how you basically know if it's telling you, you know, yes or no. Um, and some disclaimers about pendulums are, um, if you ask a pendulum a question that you already know the answer to, for example, um, if you say, um, just something basic, I can't even think of off the top of my head, but you know, if you were to ask, you know, like say you're pregnant and you're having a little boy and you know you're having a boy, if you ask your pendulum, pendulum, am I having a boy? Yes or no? Um, sometimes it'll give you a signal that you've never seen, whether it be a counterclockwise motion, a left and right motion, or just kind of going whatever direction it wants to go in. Um, and that's basically its sign for saying, hey, you know what, you're insulting me and I don't really appreciate that. I know you know the answer and you know I know the answer, so just cut the bullshit. Um, 
So don't ask insulting questions like that with pendulums. Also, like I said, everybody's yes and no is different. You don't, you know, one person's yes might be another person's no. No right way is the right way. Um, and last but not least, um, if you ask a pendulum a yes or no question and you kind of already thinking, you know, for example, using the pregnancy example, say you don't know the gender of your baby yet and you say, you know, um, am I having a little boy? And say you really, really want a little boy, it might tell you yes and you might end up having a little girl. Um, sometimes pendulums, like I said, if you ask borderline insulting questions, will kind of give you borderline insulting answers. So just kind of use that the grain of salt. Um, treat it right. It'll treat you right. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Like I said, it is the first of my new series, Wicca on a Dime. Um, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you have any requests, then feel free to comment. And as usual, I wish you all lots of light, love, and blessings. And I will see you next time. Bye.